Welcome to You're a Village Girl, doing alright, until Sophia the First comes up and punches you with might. Did you know that if you didn't smash the like button right now, like I'm talking one, two, three right now, then I will make your human body into a cookie and send the cookie monster himself to come devour you? So I mean, it's a very reasonable decision to please, it's free. Anyway guys, let's hop right into this video. Okay, so if you're an active viewer in the Star Wars Battlefront 2 community, you've probably heard of these two YouTubers, Bombastic and Battlefront night which two channels that look very similar to the open eye but when you examine are very different with battlefront knights channel mostly informational battlefront 2 or like upcoming news some of these are like best weapons best attachments like best hero star cards reinforcement star cards he makes videos like that with bombastic he he has a little bit of fun with it Honestly, Bombastic is probably my favorite Star Wars YouTuber j in general, just because he has so much fun with it, like you can tell in his videos. Something completely new. And the game has a Celestin, so you can channel your inner nine nub. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be looking through all the cosmetic items you can unlock in Star Wars Squadron. So basically, what you can find on Bombastic's channel is a load of Star Wars Battlefront 2 news, a load of Star Wars news in general, um, a lot of fun experimenting in Jedi Fallen Order, and he just got hands-on with Star Wars Squadron, so he's making some videos on that. Um, honestly, it's a lot of fun. You should go check him out. Link in the description as well. Alright, so you're probably wondering... But stop, stop. I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm about to tell you. These two channels have both my videos about how EA status is still remaining in the gaming world. For Star Wars, at least. So do you remember at the beginning when I said they were very, very different, though very, very similar? Where this, <laughs> this is where the difference comes in, because you know the Venn diagram is two circles overlaps. Their opinions on what EA has done would be on separate planets. Let me give you a quick example. At this point, EA has had the license for close to a decade. They have less than three years left on their deal, so. I think it's a fair question to ask whether or not they have squandered the rights to a license with nearly unlimited potential. I mean, you give the Star Wars license to a group of chimpanzees at the LA Zoo, and they'll probably come up with something great because you couldn't possibly screw something like this up, right? There's simply no way a publisher like EA, who I'd like to remind you have nearly unlimited resources and over 35 separate dev studios, could find a way to release just three games in seven years. I mean, that would be ridiculous, especially if, somehow, two of those three games were released amid some of the most infamous gaming controversies of the decade. Apart from the whole loot box issue, everything EA have done with the license has been outstanding. 2015 Star Wars Battlefront is a stunning graphical visual achievement in itself. Its maps are expansive and incredibly detailed and this game was like nothing we've ever seen before in terms of visuals and sound design. Battlefront 2 stepped things up once again with its vast roster of characters, different maps and gameplay across all three eras. Now I can totally see both of their ways, but honestly, Battlefront Knights just feels way more reasonable. Bombastic's approach is pretty much just looking at the good, while not even criticizing the things that were bad, like, at all. I mean, Bombastic, I love you, dude, but I mean, EA put three games out in seven years, while Luke's Arts, I should say, have put out several classics that were amazing in a year. Like, EA had so much to live up to, but they just dropped it. And as Battlefront Knight said, they have like 35 separate dev studios that could be working on Star Wars games, AAA. They could partner with other studios. Like, come on. Honestly, EA really needs to step up their game in the next three years, and maybe, maybe I'll sign a petition to get the license renewed. Best situation in my mind is that in three years, EA doesn't have the restricted rights. Any studio can make a Star Wars game if they would like. All they have to do is, you know, fill out the paperwork. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, EA, it's like captured all the other dev studios that wanted to make a Star Wars game, plant him inside their grass, and the license is theirs for the next three years, and hopefully they do something with it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I read every comment. You have my word on that, and yep. Have a great day, all you amazing people, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!
Oh, 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 oh.